We can all agree that life is truly getting harder and harder these days. So how can one stay hopeful and faithful that there really are brighter days ahead? People often advise us, right? Persevere, be tough, things will get better. But what are the reasons to hope? I'm Bob Pauline. Today, we'll learn how we can endure and persevere through even the most terrifying events in life, right here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. And joining us in this important discussion today is Brother uh, Eric Waterman in Quezon City, Philippines, Brother Marlon Balason in Jacksonville, Florida, as well as Brother Felmar Sereno there in British Columbia, Canada. Brothers, Thank you so much for joining and contributing to our discussion today. Hello, Brother Bob. Hi, Brother Bob. Uh, as I mentioned, brothers, Hello, brother. uh, today we're talking about reasons to hope. How, how should we face the extraordinary challenges and obstacles that come into our lives? And what are some of the hardships or the challenges in the first place that people are facing? Let's let's take a look at where you guys are at, brother Eric. You're currently where you're currently assigned. What are some of those challenges? Well, brother Bob, living here in the Philippines these past few years, I've seen during the pandemic that people are experiencing even more stress from their daily life and in their family. Inflation is rising, and the price of commodities and necessities is really sometimes outrageous. When I was in Africa as well, people struggled to find a suitable job and also to find a good education. Brother Felmar, what are your thoughts and how does this resemble with uh, what the youth there in uh, British Columbia are going through? Well, a recent experience I can share is a couple of weeks back, we held an open forum. And I was happy to see that many of our youth in the Church of Christ uh, they were seeking Bible-based guidance on issues like how to uh, fight depression, how to handle anxiety, how to encourage a friend who may be going through some sort of crisis. But it does go to show that mental health issues in youth is a concern in our time. In fact, uh, we have some uh, statistics here in an article published by the University of British Columbia's Human Early Learning Partnership, or HELP for short, HELP 2021. They cited that in six school districts in the BC area, 37% of grade 11 students rated their mental health as just fair or poor, and 41% were screened positive for depression and generalized anxiety. No, no, mental health then in the youth is really on the rise. Those are amazing statistics there, Brother Felmar, and well, we could say even sad uh, statistics as well, right? Agreed, Brother Bob. And we know that if these things are not handled properly, if they're not handled correctly, uh, there are those who have been led to give up on life, give up on God, and the purpose of why God has given us this life and strength which is to serve him. Brother Bob, it is true that many people are intimidated and even afraid about an uncertain future. And here in the southeastern United States, as you know, I'm here in Florida, Brother Bob, people are also struggling with inflation, unemployment. And nowadays, nearly every generation is suffering from various mental health issues. You're, you're absolutely right, uh, Brother Marlin. Brothers, you know, today's youth have have to deal with all the all of these issues that uh, that brothers you guys have been mentioning and and then add to all of that the uh, ongoing issues of uh, poverty and uh, inequality even natural calamities which are often related to climate change children and youth of today are looking ahead to a very troubled future for me when i was growing up in new york we just went outside and played. We're not thinking of drought. We're not thinking of war. We're not thinking of uh, severe uh, food shortages or other kinds of dangers that might be lurking around us. We were just outside playing. We were not thinking about the environment. We were not thinking about the impact of climate change. But now, people have all these things so pressurized in, in their minds, right? So. 
We need to know how to handle the extraordinary struggles, the extraordinary challenges that happen in life, in the lives of people in our time. So, so let's go to you again, uh, Brother Marlon. Uh, let, let's uh, together ask, brothers, uh, how did the ancient people of God face their challenges that came into their lives? How did they face it confidently and filled with hope? Brother Bob, they faced it head on. But how? The answer can be found in the Bible in Psalm 27, 1 and 3. This is what King David, a servant of God, said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust God. So who should we depend on when we face something in life? Well, our Lord God Himself. We should never be afraid of anything or anyone. The servants of God understand very well that if God brings us to it, He will bring us through it. Even if an army surrounds us, we will still trust in God and never be afraid or intimidated by anything or anyone. Here in the Iglesia Cristo, the Church of Christ, why do we trust in God no matter what? Because the verse said, I will not be afraid, I will still trust God. So, Brother Marlon, they put their hope and their trust fully in God. But who are those then? that can confidently hope like that and trust in the Lord to help them? Is it, because, and this is what the many would surely want to ask, is, 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 is it all people that believe in God? Where can we find those that have and place their complete trust in God? How, how, are, they, how are they identified? Well, Brother Bob, allow me to read the prophecy of Isaiah here in Isaiah 43, 5 and 6. This is recorded. From the far east will I bring your offspring, and from the far west I will gather you. I will bid the north lands give them up, and bid the south let go, bringing my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. So, Brother Bob, God was on their side. He made his people feel his love and his care by calling and gather them together in one place. Why? to receive his love, care, and protection. They are the ones that are his loyal and chosen servants. God called them and labeled them as his sons and daughters. So what the Bible says is that we need to be called, we need to be gathered by God and recognized as his people or his sons and daughters. Well, so who are the people nowadays and how are, how are they identified? Brother Bob, they are called by name, but not just any name. Isaiah 43, 5 to 6 was just read for us. Allow me to quote verse 7. It says the following, Even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, whom I have made. So God is the one who calls and chooses those whom he will help and protect through the struggles and battles in life. And he calls them by the name that he made. But brothers, what name then would they carry and hold? We will answer that and many more right here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. You know, dear friends, we left off after reading Isaiah chapter uh, 43, uh, verse 7, wherein it said that everyone who is called by my name. So we began asking, well, what is that name? What's the name to be carried by those who will be recipients of God's love and His compassion and His help? What is, it, what is the name that they hold? Brother Marla, let's, uh, let's start with you. Brother Bob, our Lord Jesus Christ said a prayer to the Father concerning those whom would be cared for in all situations of life. We can read that in John 17, 11. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, 
Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So those that are given protection and care from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ are those that have the name given by God to keep them safe through everything. So why is it so vitally important to be called by this precious name given by God to the Son? And what is that peculiar or particular name given? Allow me to read in Acts chapter 4, the verses 10 and 12. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So there is only one name by which man can benefit from the love of God, from his care and benevolence. That name of our Lord Jesus Christ is the precious name the Father gave to the Son, the name Christ Jesus. So how does one come to carry the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we can read that here in Acts 20:28. 20, Take therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So only those that are found in the fold or flock, the church of Christ, can expect God's love and care. But they must take heed and be careful in the ways of their lives. Here, dear friends, is a short video clip to show just how important it is to be part of that flock or a fold in order to receive, well, his help and giving us all reason for hope as we trust God here inside the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ. Take a look. If I didn't have the church, I'd probably be in a deep depression in probably a bad relationship that I didn't need to be in. I was always worried, I was stressed, I could barely sleep, I don't know where my food was gonna come from, I don't know how I was gonna you know, feed my family, I don't know if I was gonna have a future. I probably wouldn't be as of a good mother to my son. I probably wouldn't listen or understand how he's feeling, what he's going through. I feel like uh, before I joined the church, my life was uh, going in circles. It, it was like I was going, you know, one step forward and then three steps backwards. I was never getting ahead. I try not to think about what my life would be like outside of the Church of Christ. And I joined the church when I was 20 years old, which is a very fragile age, especially when you're in college, there's so much going on. Uh, once I joined the church and I was baptized and I dedicated myself to my offices and, and to God himself, um, I feel like my life did a complete 180. Put me on the right path. Um, I'm not so anxious, I'm not so stressed about the worldly things anymore like I used to be. I, I know as long as I have faith in God and pray to him and let him know my concerns, I can let it go. It's, he's gonna take care of me. Now, dear friends, as we all see the world that we live in and it's and how it's, it's filled with calamities and violence and wickedness all around. We know very well, life is not getting any easier. So when troubles come and there's no one to turn to, would anyone in their right mind want to be rejected when they pray and, and desperately need God to help them through their struggles? Brother Felmar? Well, of, of course not, Brother Bob. But what does the Bible advise us to do if ever we feel that God is not near to us? Or let's say God is not helping us with our situation. Should we still have hope in God? The Bible answers here in the book of 2 Chronicles. The chapter is 15. The verses are 4 and 12. 
But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. So there is something to be done by God's faithful servants. Taking the ancient Israelites as an example, what is it that they did? Well, according to the Holy Scriptures, they entered into a covenant or oath to seek the Lord God with all their heart and with all their soul. So it, it, it truly is possible to never be intimidated or never be afraid, no matter whatever happens in our lives. As members of the Church of Christ, we have reasons to hope if we remain loyal and make a vow to serve the Lord our God come what may. And dear friends, who was an excellent example for us that we can follow? Who was an excellent example that we must follow? We'll find out as the Galatian de Cristo International Edition continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. Today, we're talking about reasons to be filled with hope. And before we left for break, well, we asked, who's an example that we can follow, in fact, must follow? One who remained loyal to our Almighty God, come what may. Well, Brother Bob, this is what we can read, written here in the book of John 8, 29. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us the greatest example. He made a personal choice to please the Lord God in his daily life. The choice is ours in life to either live to please ourselves or to live and please our Lord God. We are confident. Join us inside the Church of Christ, you will surely please God. The Church of Christ is the true church in which we can find hope for salvation. God's people, dear friends, God's people are not afraid because they have God as their light and salvation. And we as members of the Church of Christ, well, we are certain that we have God by our side. And we want that for you too. Being that so many people are, as well, so uncertain about the things they're experiencing in their life. Together, let's watch this video clip. Well, this is of a young lady who went through some difficult challenges, maybe unlike uh, your own that you may be facing too. She went through these challenges at a very young age, and yet she always had reasons to be filled with hope. Let's hear what she had to say. I'm brave because I have my family and my faith. And I'm also brave because I have faith in God's true words that I hear being taught to us by the administration of the Church of Christ. I feel strong when, as a children's choir member, I sing hymns to praise and thank God. Through this COVID-19 pandemic, though it has been very hard, it still goes to show that with God, nothing is ever impossible. Well, we hope that this inspires you as much as it inspires all of us when we see our young sister uh, speak like that. There are many positive reasons to be hopeful, no matter what transpires in our life. Think about all the positive results that you, you, you can feel when you remain faithful. What can, we, what can we expect God to do for us so that we can remain faithful here inside the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Church of Christ? And why, Brother Eric? Well, Brother Bob, God can do so much for us. Some of them can be found what is written here in Psalms 25, the verses 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. What should we always do, dear friends? We should always ask God for guidance in what to do in our life 
so that he will teach us the proper and correct path. This is what we want to share with all of you viewing our uh, program today. Choose. Choose to do what is right. Choose to be faithful to God. We, we have reasons to hope in, reasons to believe in and trust in God. Why? Because he will teach us the paths that we should take, and especially in when crisis times come. Brothers and dear viewers, throughout the past year alone, we have seen how the Lord God has remained faithful to all of his promises to the Church of Christ. In fact, here are some highlights of the Church's accomplishments, which attest that God remains by our side. It was a year looked forward to with hope, as social distancing and mask mandates of COVID-19 were lessened, making the new normal supposedly a thing of the past. Cases now are Omicron. Inflation, the invasion, social issues, floods, droughts, devastating storms, record-breaking heat waves, and population increase took a face of its own. And now with worsening conditions of hunger, poverty, mental health issues, and economic hardship, it would seem that what was once hoped for has now become a more grim reality than one could ever think of. And yet... It was this year that the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ continued to progress in all of its endeavors. Appointed by God as its leader, Brother Eduardo Vimanalo, the executive minister, the challenges of 2022 wouldn't stop the church's abounding work, whether in caring, sharing, and erecting symbols of hope throughout the globe. If God is with the Church of Christ in its entirety, we can be sure that God will remain with His faithful servants. Even in this year of extraordinary calamities, hardships, and various trials, we have reason, we have reason to hope that through the help and mercy of our Almighty God, He will continue to uphold His promises to us. And so we, in return, must remain faithful to Him. And here inside the Church of Christ, dear friends, we will help you. We'll help you find that path to remain faithful so you too can enjoy and can experience having God by your side and receiving His promises that He wants for you. We thank our Lord God for showing us these uh, biblical truths about this important topic. And we, we genuinely hope that all of you, our listeners and viewers, are benefit, benefit from the words of God that we uphold here inside the Iglesia de Cristo and the Church of Christ and share with you regularly here on this program and the other religious programming of the Church of Christ. Well, we'd like to thank Brother Eric Waterman in Quezon City, Philippines. I'd like to thank as well Brother Falmar Sereno in British Columbia and Brother Marlon Bonasson in Jacksonville, Florida. Brothers, we thank you for providing biblical Bible-based answers, so as Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are. That's 1 Peter 3.15. Well, that does it for us here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. We hope that you'll join us again next time. I'm Brother Bob Pauline. Thanks for watching. We invite you to join us for a short closing prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, Lord God, together in all our various places around the world, we join together to thank you. Thank you for guiding us through the course of our study of your words. Thank you, dear Father, that the, for the inspiration your words provide. Thank you for the comfort your teachings give to all of us. We pray for all our guests viewing this program. Dear Lord, we want them to also feel and experience your endless compassion, mercy, and love. Please, let your words find a resting place deep within their heart, that it will move them and inspire them to know you, Father, the one true God, and serve you 
faithfully here inside the one true church of Christ. Thank you, dear Father, for the church administration, for their leadership guiding us in service to you, dear Father. Lord Jesus, please receive our many thanks as you mediate our pleadings to the Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all your grace and love to your people inside your holy church. Father, we believe you are blessing our guests and will call them to join with us if that may be your will. We pray for it together in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.